Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to talk about Raspberry Pis. Uh, specifically, this is the Raspberry Pi 4. So I just got this and I want to just play around with it and show you how we can install Raspbian on it, uh, how we can SSH into it and make changes. And also the other thing I want to do is hook it up with this GPS receiver. So I had this, this USB GPS receiver from a few years ago. I was doing a project with war driving, which is basically just driving around with, uh, in my case, a Raspberry Pi and um, trying to get the Wi-Fi access points. So in order to do that, you need a GPS receiver. So uh, I happen to have this and I just want to play around with it. Um, I haven't set it up with the Raspberry Pi 4 yet. So I just wanted to try it out and see what we can do and, and show you how I do that. Um, so yeah, if, if that's interesting, uh, if you're interested, just keep watching. Uh, you are going to need a micro SD card, a uh, Raspberry Pi, and I have a, um, you know, just a micro SD card adapter. Um, so yeah, the first thing we're going to have to do is um, just download uh, the Raspberry Pi imager. So this is a little bit different from the last time I was playing with Raspberry Pi. So you used to have to just download the image and burn it with something like Rufus or um, what's that? Oh, Etcher. But now they have this Raspberry Pi imager program, which is really easy to use. So we can just download this. Um, let's see here. Where is it? All right. Raspberry Pi imager. That's it. So I'm on Windows. So I'm just going to download this. All right, so once that finished downloading, just uh, click on it and install it. Shouldn't take too long. All right, so then just run the Raspberry Pi imager. So actually, before you click this, get your SD card, uh, plug it into the SD card adapter, and, and plug it into the computer because um, we're going to need the computer or uh, going to need this SD card. So click finish. And I'm going to close this. And here's what the Raspberry Pi imager looks like. Uh, so operating system, I'm not gonna choose this one. So this is the Raspberry Pi desktop. So this comes with all the, the GUI and stuff. I don't want that. I just want the basic uh, basic one. So if you go to this other here, they have uh, Raspberry Pi OS Lite. So that's what I'm gonna use. So just click that and then SD card. Uh, make sure you click the right one. So this is um, like a, an external backup drive I have. So make sure you don't choose that just choose your SD card which in my case is this one and then just click right and it's going to delete everything on it that's fine just click yes and this should take like five ten minutes maybe all right guys so you can see it finished so that was more like ten minutes I said five but it, it took me more like ten for this to finish but it finished successfully I'm going to click continue and we can close out of this and I'm actually going to go to my PC here and find the uh, the SD card. So I don't know, for some reason on my computer, I have to unplug it and then plug it back in in order to go into it. So what we're doing here is I wanna be able to access this with SSH um, by default. Um, so to do that, we have to include this SSH file inside of this, um, inside the SD card. So. Just find, if you want to do this, just find your drive here. So this is the Raspberry Pi operating system, all these files. So we just need to make a new file here and it's called SSH and then just delete everything else. So it's just called SSH. So now when we, when the Raspberry Pi boots up, it's going to find this SSH file and it's going to basically turn on SSH because by default it's turned off. Um, and if it's turned off, we're not going to be able to access it remotely. Um, so let me show you what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. So Raspberry Pi SSH. All right, let's see here. So there's multiple ways here that they show you to enable SSH. So they say you can, once you, like if you already started the Raspberry Pi, you can go into this. This is all like if you've already started the, uh, like you already booted it up, but here we're, this is what we're doing. We're enabling SSH on a headless Raspberry Pi. Um, so that, that's just what we did. So once you've done that, we're ready to actually boot up the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to turn this video back on and I'm going to unplug the SD card from the computer. So I got it unplugged I'm going to take it out of the, uh, adapter here. And now I'm just going to 
plug it right into the back of the Raspberry Pi here. All right, so now it's plugged in and I'm gonna go back over there and actually just plug this in. So I'm gonna plug it in power, a monitor, um, the GPS, and then a wired ethernet cable. Um, so I know I said I'm doing it headless, but I, I just have a monitor, so I'm just gonna plug it in anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go do that right now. Uh, the video might get a little blurry, but that's all right. So just plug the ethernet in, the monitor, uh, trying to find the power cord. Bear with me, I think it's down here. All right, so here's the power. And before I plug the power in, I want to plug in that GPS receiver, which you got right here. see this but eventually we're gonna see some some output on the monitor so if you didn't want to do it headless and you had a monitor you can just plug in a keyboard to get the IP address of it that way um, but I'm gonna pretend I don't have a monitor and I'm going to figure out uh, what IP address that is because that that's the next thing we have to do we have to figure out um, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to my home router page. So I'm just gonna log in here. So this is the easiest way to uh, find out the IP address because if you plug uh, a new device to the network, it should show up uh, here under wired clients eventually it's it's probably still booting up all right guys so it eventually showed up on my router page so this is the default um, host name of the raspberry pi and you can see here that's my ip address of it on the network so i'm going to copy this and since we enabled ssh we should be able to just ssh right into it um, so since I'm on Windows, I'm using something called PuTTY. Um, so if you don't have PuTTY, you can just just literally Google PuTTY and just download this uh, software here just by clicking that. And this will allow us to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to paste in the IP, and I know that the user is called, uh, is it Raspberry or Pi? I always forget. I think it's Raspberry. No, I think it's pi. So we say pi at, so user at the IP address. And if I just click open, so this is a confirmation that we were able to access it. Um, so this is just saying there's a key uh, that's, that this computer doesn't under, or do, doesn't recognize. So just click yes. And now it wants the password. So by default, the Raspberry Pi's password is raspberry. So R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And there you go, we're in, the, we're in um, the Raspberry Pi. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna update the, um, update the packages. So we can do this by doing um, sudo apt update. So make sure you run it as sudo, which that'll give it uh, root privileges. So sudo apt update. So this is just getting all the latest package versions. Um, it's not actually installing them, it's just getting them. Um, so this is pretty standard what you always do when you log into a Linux machine. So update, and then once we've updated the package versions, we need to upgrade them. So just say upgrade. And then just click Y. And once this updates, then we're good to go. And I'm gonna start showing you uh, how we can hook up that GPS receiver and start seeing data from the GPS. But 
yeah, hopefully that was a good introduction to uh, just the Raspberry Pi in general and how you can install Raspbian on it. It's getting easier uh, these days with with that Raspberry Pi imager, so uh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm actually I'll just pause the video here, and when this finishes, I'll I'll show it to you how it finished, and and that's all I'm going to do in this video. Thanks. All right, guys, it finally finished upgrading. So that probably took like five or ten minutes to do. Um, but yeah, now we're good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end the video here. If you want to keep watching um, and, and learn about how we can hook up that GPS receiver, uh, just keep watching. Thanks.